Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another very exciting video. I'm Game Mars and today we're talking about The Simpsons the Arcade Game. But before we start, I do not condone ROMs or emulation of any kind. But there's no other way to play the game. I by no means condone that type of behaviour. Now off the bat, I just wanted to say that this game is very nostalgic to a lot of people. Myself included. I actually used to play this game with my dad in an arcade in Santiago, Chile when I was five years old visiting during my summer holiday. This is actually the first time I can recall meeting him, and we bonded over our shared love of video games, particularly this one, The Simpsons the Arcade Game. But revisiting this game today, is it any good? I'm just gonna say yes, but it's not perfect. The story revolves around Mr. Burns and Wayland Smithers kidnapping Maggie because she took a diamond from them. A diamond that Wayland Smithers just stole. That doesn't really sound like something that Wayland Smithers would do, but this game was released in 1991. At the time, there were only two seasons of The Simpsons for them to draw inspiration from. And even then, the game would have been development during season two. So all they would have had to work with was the knowledge that Waylon Smithers is Mr. Burns sidekick, whom is historically a bad character. I know he has good moments on the show, but mostly he's a bad guy. Now, gameplay wise, as a beat em up, this game doesn't really give you that much of a variety of attacks. I mean, sure, there are a bunch of items, but all you can really do is hit the attack button, hit the jump and attack button, and you can join up with another Simpsons character to perform a special attack of sorts. But it's really just three attacks. Now, as for the level design, it very much follows the same template that other video games of its era did. You start off in the city, there's a lift level where you beat up a bunch of bad guys, and there's a level where you go through the woods. So yeah, not that dissimilar to a Double Dragon, for example. Let's talk about what makes this game unique. Sure, the level design is not that similar to a Double Dragon game, but imagine a Double Dragon game with The Simpsons art style. That's where this game shines for me. Well, that and the unique arcade cabinet. You have the art style of Matt Groening entering the world of video games. Just playing this game and looking at all the artwork that it has to present, there's a lot to appreciate, and it is a joy to witness to this very day. Just on the subject of the cross-pollination of art styles, check out this level that takes place in the East, where the Simpsons take on a bunch of ninjas. Personally, this level sticks out like a fish out of water, seeing that the rest of the game predominantly takes place in Springfield. I mean, seriously, they went from beating up lawyers to beating up ninjas. But you know what? That is exactly as cool as it sounds. I mean, personally, even as a child, I always loved how you beat up lawyers in this game. And even as a child obsessed with the Simpsons, I got a kick out of spotting all the easter eggs. For example, one of the bosses in this game is a cameo from the TV series. He was a wrestler who appeared on the TV screen of a scene for one split moment. His name was Professor Werner Von Braun. I really got a kick out of seeing that nod to the TV series. But that wasn't the only cameo. They had Dr. Marvin Monroe and even Bleeding Gubbs Murphy. And even the characters from Life in Hell make an appearance in this game. Life in Hell was a comic series self-published by Matt Groening when he was younger. But yeah, playing through this game today, I couldn't help but notice it was extremely difficult. You see, all the arcade games were extremely difficult just so you keep on sinking in those coins. It actually took me about 30 credits to beat this game. That makes me wonder how many trillion Bessos my dad sunk into that arcade machine. But hey, it's a modern day arcade game played on an emulator. I guess you've got unlimited continues. But let's say you got this game on the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3. They don't sell it there anymore, but let's just say it's on your console. There you will find a difficulty setting, and that may make playing through this game a lot easier for you. This game was The Simpsons meets the Japanese beat-em-up genre, and that's what made it awesome. And that cross-pollination of styles holds up to this very day. So, what do you guys think about The Simpsons the Arcade Game? Let me know about your experiences in the comment section below. Anyways, that's it from me. See ya.